Hey, it's Ted Spaghetti, and I'm back with a new Studio Series review. Uh, today, I'm taking a look at the Transformer Studio Series number 40 Deluxe Shatter from Bumblebee. Uh, this is Shatter in her um, original form uh, as just a 1971 Plymouth satellite, uh, customized, of course. Uh, this is how she initially appeared in the film. Um, for a, a split moment, um, she basically landed in a gas station, scanned this weird Texas guy's awesome car, and then proceed, and then uh, Dropkick proceeded to liquefy that guy, and then they went to go look for Bumblebee. This car mode has got to be one of the greatest car modes I've ever seen uh, on a Transformer. The paint is very glossy, so all you can see just how shiny this is. You can kind of see my face right there. You can see the gloss on this. It's very smooth and nice, and then the red just really complements it. Red and black is such a cool color scheme. Uh, it's a shame that more uh, figures don't have it. But yeah, so she comes with two accessories here. She has just two of these little arm cannons. She did have uh, can she she did have some cannons on her arms. Um, I'll have to look again how they look. There, there, there's going to be a picture right here of the gun in the movie. But I don't believe it looked quite like this. But at least they did give her, you know, some kind of a weapon. Uh, because she, uh, drop kicks, his are quite boring. And are really only uh, just this. Just this little doodad. That is a part of his vehicle mode. But you can store these weapons here. So there's a little peg right here, and there's little holes on her arms in here. So you can just slot, slot those in there, like so. Tap them in, and of course, tap it in. And there, you have Shatter with her guns attached to her. Uh, she rolls okay. Uh, her wheels aren't the best, like the, you can kind of see here how it doesn't roll very well. Um, like, especially, yeah, this this tire here is the, it's the problem child of Shatter right here. It's, it's this wheel. But this, this wheel is, oh, over here is okay. So, yeah. So let's take those off. Um, before we get into transformation, I'll take a look at the box and the instructions. So here is her box. Um, Zoom out a little bit. This is her box. Uh, you have this is a this is really cool art. Um, I it's probably one of my favorites, definitely. Uh, number forty deluxe class, and then it shows the different figures in this wave. I do have scrap metal. Um, I will some at some point buy Cogman because I didn't buy Cogman from the last night, so I'll probably will end up buying that. Uh, I'm definitely gonna complete this. Um, wait. So, arriving on Earth in 1987, J Shatter disguises herself as a 1971 Plymouth GTX and begins her search for Autobot criminals. Uh, Decepticon arrival backdrop and big screen inspired scale, detail, and backdrop. And she transforms in 23 steps. So, for the backdrop, as you can see, it has her number on there. And then you can kind of see the gas station. This is... Uh, pretty much what it looked like in the movie. Um, you, you tried sleeping with my sister unsuccessfully. That's a pretty funny line. So, um, since sh I guess shatter, since the car wasn't shatter yet, uh, you could basically put, put the car here in the backdrop and pretend it was that guy's car. Um, I don't know if the scale matches it very well as a car, but oh well. So, that aside, let's come back down to the figure. Oh, and the instructions. So yeah, there's your instructions. And that's it. And it shows build the cast here. 
So, Shatter. I really don't want to, you know, open up this car mode because it's so pretty. Um, yeah, some people say that there are a lot of QC issues with her arms and then these little side sections here. I don't seem to have a problem with that. Yes, they pop off sometimes, but that's only if, you know, I'm trying to pull it off. So I don't know if I'm that gentle, but oh well. So what you're first going to do is come here to this back section and pull out just all this right here. Kind of just lift it up to get it out. And then you're going to come in here and kind of wiggle these pieces around. Or is that not... Okay. Oh, yeah. So you're going to come into the wheel and push the wheel out at this little hinge. That will untab the foot because the foot is tabbed in to the tire. So that way you can get these out of here. And then... Uh, oh, yeah. So, the, my problem here is that these side sections here are very t tight. Oh, well, speak of the devil. It comes out. So, and it pops off because I put too much force on it. Um, how about this? How about we, we, and then we fold this out, this little red piece that was in here. And I'm going to do that just before I start unraveling that whole mess. So, it's good to cut, if you're, if you're, if, if you're having problems getting this out, kind of just wiggle the tire around because it's connected to the tire. And then just uh, swivel it to the front side like so. Now, let's see if I can actually open this up. Uh, this side seems to be a little more tight on my copy. Uh, you know what I'm just going to do? I'm just going to pop it from there and then pull it completely out like that. And there. So, I mean, as you can see, I mean, it's a little meh, but that's probably just on my part as well, that, that I'm pulling these out in a way that you're not supposed to, so, so just put those back on. Uh, okay, oh, so now, so now the legs are a little more freed up now that we have all that stuff out of the way. Just kind of bring her arms out. Uh, maybe, maybe not so close. Okay, now, oh yeah, so you'll put her tire, fold it in on itself, and then slide it into that little open section right there. And then kind of untab this black piece from the big red panel, and then extend it, because the, the joint has been bent a little bit. Um, I bent it before I even finished. Okay, so then, all right, she's kind of a mess right now. And I need to get a little more space here. So, you'll come to back here and then push down on the engine block, exposing her head. And then you're just going to make sure that it is flush with the rest of the body. Um, make sure that the chest piece is all the way down. And then you can bring this big gray flap, this gunmetal flap, and push it in all the- make sure it's pushed in all the way so that it properly shows off the detail. Uh, bring those big red panels that were on the side of the car and bring them to the back of her thigh. Uh, bring in this little piece right here and then hinge it in and swivel the arm out just like that. And then bring fold in that this back bumper section here, this part, fold it in, and then fold it again. And then, so this part up here, up by the roof and where these lights are, you're going to fold it once again. Kind of bring that kibble in a little bit, like that. And just kind of straighten her out. And oh, you're seeing my backdrop. Okay, here we go. So if I can just get her in the right angle. There we go. So there you have Studio Series number 40 Deluxe Shatter in her robot mode. Uh, you can, of course, plug her arm cannons on. She comes packaged with these attached to her arms already, which I found a bit odd. And it made me a little bit worried when I first saw this in package. I'm like, oh, shoot. Are the guns going to 
be permanently stuck to her because that would be a shame and kind of look ugly. But luckily, not. I mean, ugly just like saying it, she constantly has these on. Like, can you imagine Optimus Prime constantly holding his gun? It would be kind of annoying. Oh, shoot, I forgot to do vehicle mode comparisons. Oh, well, I can still do robot comparisons. So, as you can see, the transformation is definitely on de definitely on par with the other Bumblebee figures. I don't have Optimus Prime yet, but definitely on par with the other Deluxe figures being kind of small. And then she's got small pieces, so it's definitely more difficult to manipulate than, say, a Revenge of the Fallen Deluxe, where... You know, it's got, it's a bigger figure, but still has uh, smaller pieces, but it's easier to manipulate. So, in my pile of comparisons, here, we'll do robot mode comparisons. So, here she is with uh, number 18, Bumblebee. Um, so, she is quite a bit taller than him. And then, here she is next to Dropkick. So, I don't think Shatter is very much to scale with, um, really either of them. She seemed to tower over Bumblebee, and she was definitely a head taller than, or it just seems like a head taller than Dropkick. As you can see, if you, like, standing up, she is about a head taller, but she his head came up to about right here at the very top of her chest. So, so Shatter is definitely too small. Okay, because I think the scale between Dropkick and Bumblebee works, but I don't think the scale between Shatter, Bumblebee, and Dropkick works. So, which is a bit of a shame, so I hope that the Jet version fixes this. Either the Jet version of Dropkick is larger, or the car version of Dropkick is smaller, which, you know, could be a possibility. So there it is between the three of them. I think those two look pretty good together. I think... Shatter definitely makes Dropkick look better than he was considering. Personally, I think Dropkick is um, one of the worst Studio Series figures so far. So, yeah. And for another size comparison, here she is next to her wave mate, Constructicon Scrap Metal number 41. Uh, I'm not sure which one of these reviews I, I'm, I've uploaded first, but there they are together. So, as you can see, Scrap Metal is definitely way larger than Shatter. Uh, in both height and just overall bulk, um, Scrap Metal is definitely much more of a massive character than her. And I, I, I think that's fitting. So, on to detail. Um, Shatter is alright. I think a lot of the details they have nailed on here, but other ones just make it fall flat on her face, which is non-existent getting onto that later on. So... Her legs look a lot like the movie. I mean, they, they, they're beautiful. Her legs are just full of, like, different little details and car parts. I think that these little black pieces on the inside, even though they don't really, they don't transform at all, I think they look really nice with the rest of the legs. I don't like that this big panel's on the back of her leg, but it can be, you know, overlooked. Uh, her arms are pretty accurate to the movie. Um, with this, you know, black piece right here. Uh, I, I don't know if the shoulder detail, the shoulder detail, um, just looking at the, her picture of her on her box, which definitely looks just like Shatter from the movie. The shoulder detail is not on point, but at least they included it. But I think it was like, you know, a little, they went too much out of their way to like, oh, look, this little panel becomes a part of her body. Like, it's kind of stupid. And I think that they could have used their resources better um, with just this small, you know, not even an inch piece, you know. Um, where she does, you know, really fall apart in robot mode. Um, aside from, of course, her loose arms and this little panel back here. Um, is this section right here. While this whole piece of detail right there, that looks really good. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Like, what the hell is this? It's like her... I don't understand why they couldn't have better engineered her chest piece so that maybe this middle piece went away and then this headlight and then this headlight over here, which is the headlight that's actually on her robot mode in the model. It, 
it is literally such an like th one of the parts of her robot mode that shows the most vehicle parts which is her chest you know doesn't actually have a proper ch Ugh. i don't understand it and i think this part here is kind of ugly here because here you have this great amount of detail where it actually looks like her movie model and then these like this whole section here where it's her actual car chest that just looks ugly so like i don't understand what they were thinking here Ugh, i i don't get it like they could have made this chest section look so much better but they just decided not to another problem i have is her face so i get that this was on a ton of the concept art but they, by about, um, when did, when did Shatter and Dropkick first get revealed to, like, something, like, ridiculous, like, July, July or August, I think we first saw our, our images of them. They knew what Shatter's face was going to look like for the movie. And then when this was revealed in October, this figure was revealed in late October of 2018, they, then they, they had this old face on it. Like, they could have had time even before Comic Con, even before, like, I think, uh, England, Com London Comic Con, they could have, like, redone her face and had a proper face sculpt. Like, even the uh, Energon Igniter's Jet version has her proper face sculpt on there. And I don't understand why they put this face sculpt on here. Never when she is in this form does she really use this face. You see her transforming with this on for a second, but ugh, it's so, it kind of ruins the figure for me. I It's okay, like at least kind of the shape of her head is there with the antenna and the back of the head is okay, I like that. But then the face is just kind of like ugly. Like that doesn't look cool. I think it just looks like, like, you know it's sad when a Constructicon has a better face design than you. Cause like, just look at that. That just, it looks kind of, like I, like, I like this figure, but like the face is revolting. That doesn't look at all like Shatter. Shatter like had a cool kind of cunning personality and her face brought that out with her like, kind of like smirk when she was totally tricking Sector 7. Like she, she looked really awesome with her face. Her face had a lot of expression in it. And I think that that this figure kind of, like, destroys, you know, her, the rest of her personality. And that's a shame because I like this figure a lot compared to a lot of other people. A lot of people hate this. But, like, really, though, the, the face is the worst part about this figure. Moving on our, to our articulation, she has a bit of a butterfly joint here due to transformation and then her arms are in ball joints and they can go uh, due to a lot of the kibble her range is limited so then she can bend at the elbow and she can do an, an elbow swivel is it yeah uh, no hand articulation of course or waist articulation um, it's kind of funny to me how all the Studio Series figures um, can really do detail well, but not articulation. Like, some of them are made for articulation, like uh, Studio Series Optimus Prime from the first two movies. Like, those are definitely made for articulation, while other ones are just made for detail, kind of like Blackout and Shatter. Uh, her legs, she cannot go out at all. And it's not even to do to, like, a lot of people say, oh, it's this big panel behind. Like, her legs are literally sculpted to the point where you can't go out. So, that's kind of unfortunate. I wish they could find a way around that. <coughs> <coughs> they could find a way around that and um, just better engineer her leg. Uh, it can go out pretty far. And uh, kind of back a little bit uh, due to her backpack. Her backpack is a little too big. Uh, she has some knee articulation up here due to uh, transformation. Then she has double knee joints here due to articulation. And then she has a little bit of a uh, foot articulation, once again, due to transformation. 
Uh, and then her head is very well articulated. It can look up, it can look down. That right there kind of looks like the, the box art on the um, Energon Igniter figure. But yeah, so her head is, while it looks horrible, um, her, her head is very articulated. So, for final thoughts on Studio Series Shatter. Do I think you should pick her up? Absolutely. Her car mode is stunning. Uh, a lot of her robot mode detail is pretty good, but, like, the head is just not great. So, if if you can look past the face, like, like I can look past the face, okay? Like, I think it's, I think it's a pretty good stand-in for a Shatter figure currently. Until we get a jet mode shatter, which probably won't be until something crazy like wave eight or nine. So, but yeah. So I do recommend this figure. She she's a lot of fun, and if you if you like cars, like it's especially classic cars, this is definitely a figure for you. It has one of the best car modes I've ever seen on a movie figure, and maybe even out of all my Transformers, it definitely has one of the best car modes ever. And we've had, you know, like, you know, 18 Lamborghinis. So, so yeah. As always, don't believe the news, don't believe the hype, spaghetti out.